Hey, good morning and welcome to Home Church. I am Pastor Nate and I am so glad that you are with me this morning. It, it, today is just going to be a really good day. It is beautiful outside. There are a lot of great things and, and I'm just excited to spend some time in God's Word with you today. I'm fi flying solo, um, so no guests and, and uh, no kind of shared conversation. We're going to bring all those back, um, but I really feel like I had a word from the Father and so I want to spend some time with you this morning just sharing some of that word. But um, as always, we encourage you to find some time of worship. Even before we turn the cameras and everything on this morning, we had some worship going on in here. And just usher in the presence of the Father into your home. I really encourage you to find some time to separate yourself and have time where it just is about Him. You just spend time with Him. You just spend time worshiping Him and talking to Him. So I encourage you, find some time today to do that. Find some time today to plug in with him and watch just some amazing things as the whole spirit of your home is going to change. And so we encourage you to do that. Let's open up in some prayer and uh, then we're going to just jump right into this and uh, let's let the Father do what the Father does best. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the great opportunity we get to gather in homes that you've given us technology that allows us to connect with people from all walks of life, from any place on this planet we can plug in today we can get in line with your spirit that we can usher in your presence into our hearts into our homes I ask right now that you would not only wash us from head to toe of anything that would separate us from you i pray that you would answer every prayer request you see every hurting body you see every hurting mind you see everyone who's hurting in their spirit I pray that you would touch marriages and homes that you would Bless businesses and finances. Pray that you would rise up your people to be a beacon of light in our world. That today you would give us a rhema, a fresh word from you, a fresh word from your word, from your mouth, from your voice. I pray that you would encourage someone today. You'd fill us with your presence. That you would just completely have your way. In the name of Jesus, everyone says, Amen. I am really, again, excited to be with you today. 
and uh, I welcome you to Home Church, and this is sort of how we do this. We'll talk a little bit more about Home Church at the very end, but uh, let's just jump right into this, right? Um, as someone who gets to not only, you know, be in front of a camera for work or even here for Home Church, and I've been facilitating for many years, preaching, facilitating, teaching, doing that kind of stuff. It's it's always like a craft. It's a craft that I'm constantly trying to work on and trying to to constantly get better at trying to find ways to be a better storyteller. Like being a really good storyteller allows people to connect with you. It allows you to kind of take people on a journey and it allows you to help teach principles. I mean, look, Jesus was the ultimate storyteller. He would tell these stories in such a way that thousands of people would come just to hear his words that they of course knew that he was going to heal their sick and that miracles and wonders were following him. There was something about these stories that Jesus told. He'd often say, let him with ears, let him hear. Why would he say that? Like, what was it about him saying, let him who has ears, let him hear? Most people have ears. He's like, no, 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 wait, there's people who hear my voice. There's people who get what I'm trying to say. Like, they're willing to, like, connect with me and listen to me and work through it. And he would sometimes get frustrated with his disciples. I said, like, how long have you been hanging out with me? And you've heard these stories. You, do you still not get it? We have to be really, really good storytellers. Right? Like every good book, every good movie, every good story, every good song has like an opening sentence. It has an opening scene. It has an opening page, an opening tune that like grabs me. It grabs you and just pulls you in. In Genesis chapter 1, our ultimate book has the best story. It's the story of creation, the story of, of God separating the heavens and the earth. He's a water-separating God. He is a soul-breathing God. And in the, the first couple of pages of our book, he's thrust into the story of creation. That is the ultimate story. Page after page, God rises up heroes to save his people. He, 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 he speaks through donkeys. He, he raises up people who's killing others and saving his people with, uh, whether it's rocks or lamps or donkey jawbones, like all of these crazy stories are found on the pages of our Bibles. God's people start to stand up for what they believe in in the face of kings and queens and armies. An innocent virgin birth is taking place, and, and we meet our master in human form of Jesus, even to the humble beginnings of when he first starts to call these fishermen into ministry. Pages after pages after pages of amazing stories jump off of this thing we call the Bible and into the reality of our lives. We, we glean principles from them. We memorize these things. We Even from a, an early age, we, we start to memorize these scriptures and these stories because they're real. And when you think about the beginning of the church, this movement that Jesus created called the church, has a magnificent story. Jesus has now been unrightfully convicted at a juryless trial. He's been hauled off and his followers have been completely scattered. He's been murdered and crucified on the cross, buried in a borrowed grave just to come back in three days to find that it's actually empty. Jesus, this shape shifter, shows up in a way to have conversations with his people that they didn't even recognize who he was. He cooks meals, he eats meals, he's walking through water, he's I mean, walking through walls, he's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Even Hollywood itself would have probably thrown this script away had it been given to them to be a movie. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that this was our Jesus, and this is the story of the birth of our church. Acts chapter 2, let me see if I can show you something. Acts chapter 2, we're going to go down to verse 14 through 21. Jesus comes and, and he says, look, I, I want you to go wait for me. I'm going to send you off over here, and the helper is going to come. So the Holy Spirit falls on them. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. They begin to speak in other languages. They begin to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. It draws this tremendous crowd, and for the very first time, 
we get to see a preacher standing up, probably doing a much better job than I'm doing today, and preaching to a sinner. The first time we get to see the message of Jesus Christ after he has been dead, buried, and resurrected, and back off to heaven, and sends the Holy Spirit, this is the very first interaction, the birth of the church. Jesus, Jesus sends uh, Peter with all of this authority to begin to preach the gospel, and Peter stands up and begins to preach the message of Jesus. He, he begins to let people know this is who Jesus was. This is the message of God. This is this new covenant. And in the beginning of this, he starts to quote the prophet Joel. This is what we see right here. In the prophet Joel announced that this would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people, your sons and your daughters. Your sons will prophesy also your daughters. Your young men will see visions and your old men shall dream dreams birth of the church is this magnificent story where Peter stands up and begins to quote the prophet Joel that this is what God talked about. This is what he's always been talking about. Through all the prophets and all the stories that we know and we've learned, this is exactly what he was talking about. And on this amazing day, the birth of a legacy that you and I still carry today, Peter's first thing to do was to remind the church this is what God was talking that he was going to do. Verse 17, he says, Sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, uh, John Adams, most of the founding fathers actually attributed the bulk of what became our Declaration of Independence, to something that they had seen in a dream. Albert Einstein once ascribed the theory of relativity as a dream as a young boy. These are dreams. Thomas Edison discovered electricity in his dreams. The movie Avatar, this amazing movie that, that broke blockbuster revenue-generating movie, just an amazing movie, was all from a dream that James Cameron had. Beethoven would hear musical compositions in dreams. Even Bob Dylan would start to hear tunes in his dreams that he would turn into reality. Dreams are a powerful, powerful concept that God has given us. Dreams, they're, they're a series. They're thoughts and images, emotions that act out in our minds whenever we're sleeping. You know, they actually did studies to find out why do we dream? the purpose of dreams and they found out this they found out that those people who don't dream actually have less of a mental health that they have less mental health because of their lack of dreams and they found out that those who don't dream actually have more tension more anxiety more depression a hard time concentrating lack of coordination clumsy like me a tendency to hallucinate these are all because we don't dream. Dreams are powerful. And, and the Bible says, Joel, Joel says from hearing from God, and then Peter reminds everyone of the message of Joel at the birth of the church, that our old men shall dream dreams. That men and women who've been serving God a long time, that have a lot of maturity, that have been walking this out, who've seen a lot of things, who experienced a lot of things, that you are supposed to be dreaming. I want to take a second and just talk to the dreamers for, for a minute. I, I want to talk to those who feel like maybe my dreams are too far gone. Maybe they're too far out there. They're, I'm too old. I never achieved those things. They, they make you laugh when you even think about trying to accomplish those dreams. You've, you've thrown them away. You've put them on a shelf somewhere. You've kind of forgotten completely about them. I, I want to speak to those dreams and accomplishments that that God has placed inside of you, those dreams to accomplish great things, those dreams to just be, that's going to take a lot of courage to step out of and do, those dreams that are going to challenge you, dreams that make you push yourself, 
Here's why God gave you those dreams, because he understands that he can accomplish them through you, that you don't have to do this alone. This is where my relationship with Jesus is so important, that I'm engaging with him on a daily basis because he's placed inside of me dreams. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the dreamer in you. I'm telling you, God has placed dreams inside of people that he does not want us to give up on. These are dreams that he placed inside, and I believe that in this day, he is going to begin to revive dreams. He's going to begin to remind you of things that maybe he put in you when you were a little boy or a little girl. I'm going to tell you that he's placing things inside of you. He's recalling things to your mind. He's going to recall things in your spirit. You're going to begin to dream things again because God wants to accomplish things through you. You are a part of the process of the beginning of the church. Our old men are to dream dreams. If you have a dream like that, I'm telling you, the Father wants to use it. God wants to step into your life. He wants to revive those dreams. He wants to align things in your life for good. He wants to connect you with the right people. He wants to have the right conversation at the right time. God cares about your dreams. He said, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. A vision is the faculty or or state of being able to see, being able to think through the process to make something happen. The reason our old men are supposed to dream dreams is because it's our young men who have the vision to complete those dreams. They can take the dreams of our elders, the dreams of our more mature Christians, and they have the stamina, the vision, the understanding, and the process that God has already equipped them with to make those dreams become an actual reality, a tangible thing that we can see and feel and touch. Visionaries take the unthinkable, the imaginary, the conceptual, and they make them into reality, and it's our young men that were given that gift, our young men and our young women that were given that gift to be visionaries for the church. You see, because vision gives us focus, it gives us drive, it, it harnesses all of our power into this one singular focus. That is what great visionaries do. Visionaries have the ability to solve business problems, to solve city problems, to solve neighborhood problems, to solve country problems, to solve world problems. I'm telling you, God is placed inside of you. I'm talking to the visionaries, the young men and the young women who just naturally are able to connect A, B, and C together in a just natural way. You're able to see an opportunity. You're able to hear a concept and see the exact way to make those things happen. That is a God gift. That is how God has designed you to have these visionary opportunities, to see things as if they were. This is faith. This is faith in an action way being placed in our lives to be worked out. This is the amazing way that God has designed the church. God has put things inside of our young men and our young women. I'm talking to the visionaries, the young people who are looking for a place and looking for an opportunity. And that is, as the church, what we have to create. We have to create not only a safe place where our visionaries have the opportunity to step into their God-given calling, their God-given right, but also have the opportunity to have a voice, a real voice, where when they speak, we listen because God has given us visionaries. Here is why our young people are walking away from God. They're walking away from the church. It's because we haven't done a good enough job to create a place where they have a voice. We haven't given them enough opportunity to just be themselves. We haven't given them enough opportunity to just continue to step in to the God-given role and right that he has said, your young men shall see visions. We have to begin to prepare a place. And I'm talking to my visionaries. If you don't have that place, I'm encouraging you to find a place. Home Church is going to be all very intentionally about creating a place for all of our young men and our young women to step into being visionaries, to solving the problems that God has given you the ability to solve. This is the day. This is the moment that God has created us to step into those roles, to step into our world, our world who's looking for answers, 
a world that seems to be as dark as we've ever seen it before. And this is when our light is to be shining as bright as it possibly can. And our young men and our young women are as bright as they possibly could be. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. That's what Joel said. He said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. They'll give the predictions. They'll hear from the Father. They'll be engaging him on a daily basis, and they're going to speak as if things already were. He's going to speak the voice of God in his life. Our Father longs. He longs. He's desperately searching and looking for young people who've been given the opportunity to engage with him on a daily basis, to engage in him in a very real way to where they hear his voice clearly. And when they hear his voice, they've been given an opportunity to speak what they've heard. A group of young people so engaged with heaven that they speak when he speaks. And as to the church, it's our job. It's our job to create a place. It's our job to create an opportunity where they can step in and they have the opportunity, a safe place to mess it up, to fumble it up, to not hear quite clearly, to maybe say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. But it is our young people that are supposed to be prophesying. It's our young people who are supposed to be bold enough, so connected with their God not in just a worship service, not in, in, in just a, a really massive move of God that's happening when we're together in our congregation, but walking in prophecy, the ability to look at their friends, to look at their neighbors, to look at their parents, to look at their connections and say, I'm hearing this for you from God. And they're able to walk into that boldness. You see, prophecy gives us that guide. It gives us that opportunity to say, this is where you're supposed to go. This is what you're supposed to do. I'm going to give you this thing. God is saying these things are going to be true. And you combine that with the dreams of our old men and the vision of our young men and young women. And we have this amazing, beautiful thing that God added to daily because people wanted to be engaged with it. It had real purpose. It had real movement. People sold all of the things that they owned, piled them up in a big pile, and shared with everyone who had need. I'm in no way saying that we should go live in a covenant. No one's moving into my house. But we are still supposed to be meeting the needs of each other in a real, tangible way, having meals together, sharing life together, connecting with our cities and our neighborhoods, connecting with the problems because we're engaging with God. We're hearing his voice. We've engaged our young men and our young women. We've engaged our more mature Christians. And together, we are really working this thing out with our father. He is working through us and engaging with us. It's our young men and young women that whose prophecies will give us hope and direction, whose vision will solve problems, and whose elders will give us dreams that push us, that challenge us. And all together, we are to be making a difference from the Father. I'm speaking to the dreamers today who think your dreams are dead and gone. God is going to revive those. He's reviving those things right now. I'm speaking to our young men and young women who are able to solve problems. And you're just looking for an opportunity to step into that. I'm telling you that that is from God. And he wants you to step into it boldly. And I'm speaking to our communities that we are creating a place where our young men and young women, in Timothy, he says, set an example for the believers in your speech, in your love, all of these things. He said, set an example for the believers, not for the world. Our young people are supposed to be leading the church. They're supposed to be the ones stepping into this, leading us in how they speak and how they love and how they're connected with the Father in prophecy, in vision. We have to create an opportunity for that. I did it. I I built youth groups. This isn't about building another program and separating our young people to do their thing on the opposite side of the building from us, but creating an opportunity where we are all engaging the Father together. And together, we're able to do some amazing things, works and wonders, raise the sick, or, or heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. That is our opportunity. That is the thing that God has called us to do. And the stage is set. 
God has specifically and intentionally placed his people in this day and age. I think that he has aligned things that we are seeing in the physical that have already happened in the spiritual first, that God is looking to give people victory. He's looking to set people free. He's looking to break the bondages of addictions and sickness and pain of mental anguish and and heal scars and heal hurts that have been done, not only to individuals, but to whole groups of people. God is looking to heal his land, but it's only going to happen whenever we're engaged with him. When we have lived out what we see the church at its birth in Acts chapter 2. The God-given right birthright of the church. Prophesy, cast vision, to hear dreams. And some of you have wondered, is this thing inside of me really from God? Like, is, what is this thing all about? Or, or, or maybe you, you've just openly said, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to step into that. This is where we move from religion, which is just a bunch of checked boxes that kind of soothe our Christian soul and maybe help us sleep a little bit better at night to truly engaging with God on a daily basis where I am hearing his voice, where I'm being moved in my spirit through my communications with him. I'm walking into my purpose and he is uplifting my dreams. He is uplifting my visions. He is giving me the opportunity to speak prophecy into my world and into the worlds around me. This is the overflowing cup that God was talking about. Not just finances, but I do believe he wants to bless finances. I do believe he wants to bless checkbooks and businesses and marriages. But living a life so engaging with him that my cup overflows and it flows onto the world around me. It flows onto my neighbors. It flows onto my coworkers. It flows onto my family members in such a real way. They get to benefit from the blessings that are on my life. That is the life that God has called me to. These things of prophecy and dreams and visions, in my perspective, in my engagement with the American Christian world, is that we've given that to just a select few of men and women. This like elite few of Christians that have become like Christian pop stars that we idolize because, man, they can prophesy and they can read my mail and they can see things and, boy, they can heal the sick, but that wasn't given to a select few That is men and women who have walked into their purpose, who've stepped into their gift and their talent, who've walked and engaged with their father in such a way they've walked in this. They're connected with him and that they have this opportunity to allow God to flow through them. And that same opportunity is available for you and I. And I'm prophesying right now. I'm prophesying to to old men who feel like your dreams are dead for for mature ladies who feel like I can't accomplish that thing that God has placed inside of me to the young men and young women who feel like I don't have a voice. I don't have an opportunity. I'm prophesying that this is your birthright, that this belongs to you and I, and I encourage you to step into it because this is what the church was at its birth. And this is the bride that the father is going to be expecting when he returns. And I believe that right now, today, he is doing that very thing. If all of this seems a little bit foreign to you, if all of this seems a little bit like spiritual mumbo jumbo, maybe something that I don't know if I believe in all of that stuff, I'm telling you that there's a real God who wants you to experience him. He wants to have a deep, intimate relationship with him. And I can tell you right now, He has been intimately chasing after you for a very long time. Maybe it's just time to stop running. I'm not talking about another religion. I'm not talking about slightly tweaking what we do or don't believe. I am talking about a real God who will figure all of that stuff out with you as you seek after him. That God wants you to experience him today. This beautiful thing happens whenever I stop trying to self-govern myself. I I stopped trying to do it all on my own. I stopped trying to fight my own guilt 
and, and my own expectations. I stopped trying to fight the fight of a busy schedule and trying to do it all when I feel like I don't have it in me. Whenever I stop trying to do all of the stuff on my own, and I align myself with him. This isn't about a bunch of stuff that now all of a sudden you've got to stop doing and you've got to walk away from. That stuff actually happens very naturally. But it is about living a peaceful, loving relationship with the Father on a very daily basis. He engages with you. He heals your pain. That He gives you strength and peace that passes all understanding. That He brings life into you and that you have a new life and energy about you, and that your steps are now ordered by him, and that you are walking this out on a daily basis. Some of us have been ravaged by guilt and shame. Some of us feel like the church is never going to take me back. There's never going to be a place for me. These things that you're talking about are already passed by me. There is no more hope for me. I've tried that out. It doesn't fit for me. I'm telling you right now, just because you maybe have experienced the wrong side of an American religion that has been packaged up and sold to you as a real God, wants to wipe all that away. He wants you to experience him in a very real way. And I, I strongly strongly ask you 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 find some time even during my prayer here in just a second invite the father in ask him to be your savior to remove yourself from self-governance and then to seek after him and when that happens when that truly happens when you truly give your heart to him i'm not just talking about asking for forgiveness i'm talking about truly turning away doing an about face from our sins aligning myself back with him. Your response will be baptism. Your response will be to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those are gifts that God gives us in a natural response. No one has to ask me to hug my wife, to give my wife a kiss. Those things happen naturally out of my love for her. And the same thing will happen out of a natural relationship with the Father. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you that we get to be together that your word has went forth. Thank you for your love and patience and kindness. I just, you are a good father. You are so good to us. You are mind-blowingly good to us. When, even when I don't deserve it, you are still good to me, patient and kind and long-suffering, slow to anger, quick to love, quick to forgive, quick to make a, a, a my way straight speaking to the dreamers, to the visionaries, the prophets that you've placed inside of our hearts, inside of our communities. Father, I pray that you will begin to revive things. I, I speak peace upon minds. I feel that so strongly this week, Father, that just your presence of peace in our world, in our minds, in our hearts. I pray, God, that people will begin to sleep at night again. You would bring rest to minds and hearts and spirits. In the name of Jesus Christ, revive dreams this moment. I begin right now, Father, you begin to remind us of dreams that you've placed inside of us. I pray that right now you begin to revive things, that you begin to open doors, that boldness would begin to come over us, and we would begin to step into this relationship with you in such a way we're prophesying, casting vision, stepping into dreams. Pray, God, that men and women would turn their hearts towards you. Pray that someone today would ask you to be their Lord and Savior, that you would step into a relationship with you, that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit. You just completely wash away every religious obligation or constraint or boundary that's just kind of getting in the way of a real relationship with you, I just pray that you would remove those things, Father, that you would step in a relationship with us. pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Again, I'm so excited that I got to spend some time with you today, and I pray that this was encouraging. Um, I can't wait to be back. We've got a lot of new things that's going to be taking place. Um, home church is quickly starting to uh, move forward. We were able to meet uh, as a, a community finally again uh, this week in Metairie at our home church in Metairie. But God is just doing some really cool things, and, and 
We've got a lot of needs and a lot of things that we're working on, but I know that the Father is going to do what the Father does. So hopefully soon we'll be able to have a little bit better pr production and some better cameras and some really new, neat stuff um, that are in the works that I'm really excited that I, I want to tell you about, but they're not quite ready. So we're going to hold off until things are ready. September 27th, that's when we're going to officially launch Home Church. We're going to be meeting in homes all across the city here in New Orleans. Um, we're also going to uh, be meeting over meals and really enjoying community together. And we will have video sermons that will come into our home unless whoever's speaking that week, if one of our pastors are in the home, they'll just present their message um, to the people in that home. We will have times of worship. Um, it's just it's just a really amazing thing that happens when you stop and pause and eat a meal together and then enjoy some worship together in this really intimate smaller setting and we just God does some really really cool stuff and we just believe that this is the opportunity that we want to step in we want to embrace this new technology you're going to see some changes coming to my personal YouTube and web page that we're going to start including some home church opportunities and I'm just I'm really passionate really excited and I can't wait to see what God is going to do here and, and I, I'm super appreciative so humbled that any of you are going to be on this journey with us. I, I hope that you enjoyed last week. If you missed last week, I strongly encourage you to go back and listen to that. We did a roundtable discussion with four young leaders um, that are connected in my life, and I thought it was really powerful to hear their voices um, and to hear uh, what they feel like the answer is for the church to do. Um, I just, I'm going to, we're going to do that again. We're going to bring that back. Pastor Todd will be back with me here pretty soon, um, and we'll have some more discussions. and. Um, even soon, we're going to have one of my mentors come and, and present the Word of God to us, Pastor Tim Rutledge um, from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, just an amazing man of God that um, is super powerful, and I can't wait for him to come and share the Word of God with us. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you're part of Home Church and you're wondering how can you pay your tithes now and, and uh, submit your offerings, um, right here on Facebook Live, there's a button on our Facebook page. Um, that you can donate, but you can also go to my website, natelejeune.com forward slash give, and there'll be an opportunity to give there. Um, everything goes straight to building this community and uh, creating resources for this community so that we can meet the needs of those around us. And as a church, um, you know, we're stepping into this new thing, and, and unfortunately, it is really expensive to start a church, um, and we definitely have some needs. So uh, anyone who wants to step into that um, it, it is a form of worship. It is a God principle. And I got to be honest with you, it is something I'm super uncomfortable with that I got to get better at because I truly believe I've been a tithing. Our family's been tithing for 15 years and or maybe more than that now. Um, and I've just watched how he blesses when you give back to him when you give him what belongs to him. He blesses the 80, the 80 90, whatever the percentage is that you um, have given he blesses that man, and he blesses your family. He gives you opportunities, and, and as God's people, man, I want to walk in his blessings no matter what they look like, and uh, I, I'm I'm just so blown away by the response that we've had to home church and, and what my wife and I are doing. It is new. It's different, and I hope that you come along this journey with me. So have a really great week. Um, we're going to continue. Work is kind of crazy for me right now, and so we're not quite there to where we're producing as much stuff as we want to, but we're going to get there, and uh, I can't wait for September 27th to get here. We're going to have a really big celebration that day, and uh, it's going to be a really great opportunity. If you'd like to be hear more about Home Church or find some opportunities if you live here locally in New Orleans, the great thing about Home Church is you can participate from anywhere. You can just be in your home, and you know that every Sunday here at 9 a.m., you can fire up this sermon and watch and be connected on uh, both my website, our social media, and, and also our YouTube page. So come connect with us. Let's walk this out, man. We're going to create an opportunity to live this out with our Father each and every day, and, and I want you to come along this journey. So I pray for you. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. If you ever